Right guys, we're sort of out in my, my other junky workshop, I guess you'd call, which is where I have my horizontal bandsaw set up. And, uh, and it's just starting to rain. I haven't had rain for a while. Um, had a fellow traveller, David uh, from Queensland, um, come through and look at the video when I did the um, motor replacement on this bandsaw when the when the old one actually caught fire, <laughs> went up in flames when the blade got jammed. And um, he wants to do a similar replacement on his bandsaw but uh, doesn't have the ability to do any turning or milling to be able to uh, to make up the adapter shaft that I made up to be able to fit this this motor to. Um, one of the issues was uh, this has only got a fairly short stumpy um, motor shaft. It's an ISO standard. The one that was on there looked more like a washing machine motor and had a much, much longer shaft. Now you can buy the replacement motors for this from our friends at uh, Machinery House, but uh, you pay nearly $300 for the privilege. Uh, this one cost me um, just shy of a hundred dollars when I actually bought it. So um, we're going to make up an adapter shaft for uh, for David. He's going to send his pulley down to me, post it down to me from Queensland. I'll bore it out and uh, and redo the keyway for him, and then I'll post that up with the adapter, and uh, he can get his uh, his bandsaw back and going again. So uh, I didn't do any drawings of this particular stub shaft that I made up, but you can go back. I'll leave a link to the uh, video where I did do it. You can just see how crappy my my sketches look. I did that one very quickly on the fly. You can understand probably why I like to use uh, use AutoCAD. So um, we'll uh, we'll get this apart and uh, we'll have a look at it. Um, it's got some I wouldn't call them dodgy. Let's say unique features in it. So we'll we'll, we'll get this apart and we'll have a quick look at it. All right. So let's just get this off. Right, so we've got our stub shaft which is 18 mil in diameter, so I've actually bought out the pulley a little bit further. I've actually gone the maximum I can without actually breaking through into the, uh, into the bottom diameter of those uh, V-bolt grooves, but also allowing us to be able to uh, cut a new keyway. So I, I couldn't really go bigger in diameter. So what I've had to do was, uh, because I couldn't internally slot to fit the keyway, I've actually cut through externally. I'm just using a cable tie to hold the key in place and it works very, very effectively. And then we've got our, our five mil key here. And then if you well, can't see down inside there, but I've got a socket head of cap screw actually holding that adapter into place onto the shaft so it's not gonna go anywhere. And look, I did this modification a little over 12 months ago now, I think it is. And uh, it's uh, it's working really, really well. There's, there's no wear at all on any of those uh, those keyway sets. So hopefully we can uh, reproduce this and uh, and get David on his way. It's funny, I was looking at uh, Cliff from Cliffy Shed and uh, he's uh, he's redoing his, uh, his gearbox, which is that one in there with the... Uh, Worm and worm wheel, so a uh, very interesting video. And uh, if you want to see a bloke who gets in and has a go and uh, uses whatever he's got on hand to, to make it work, you know, go and check out uh, Cliff Shed. It's a it's a great uh, great little channel. I, I really enjoy watching Cliff. I'll leave a link to uh, to that little video just down in the in the description. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll get this off. We'll have a look at it and. Uh, I might actually do a CAD drawing of this so I've got it on hand rather than using that crappy sketch I had. Alright guys, we'll see you in a tick. Alright guys, let's see uh, the adapter shaft out. You can see that external key that I've had to put in that drops through onto the keyway of the uh, of the shaft and uh, while we hold it on with a, a little cable tie. But it's just a blind hole in there so that it butts up against the uh, the end of the shaft and we've got a socket of cap screw down the other way that uh, locks it onto the shaft. And we've got the key here that, uh, that drives the pulley. You sort of see we're down to a fairly thin wall. I've sort of had to juggle balls a little bit between what I could do with the pulley and uh, try and maximise the amount of meat that I had there. So that's what we've come up with. So I'm going to quickly sketch that up on CAD. Put my bandsaw back together again and uh, we'll get making. Alright guys, I'll see you in a tick. Alright guys, we've got our quick CAD drawing. Uh, knocked up very quickly on uh, the dimension set based on that um, other adapter I've made up. So, as I said, fairly straightforward. We've just got an 18mm OD to machine. We've got a couple of counterboards to come in. That one there to fit the uh, the motor shaft. This one here to be able to fit the socket head cap screw so that we can um, get that fastened in nice and tight. And then we've got uh, 
the keyway that we need to cut. And as I said, we're going to be cutting through under the bore of that keyway. And we just used the um, cable ties just to hold that key in place. All right, so a bit of scrap stock, a bit of an offcut. So uh, we'll set that up in the uh, AR32 uh, AR collet and we'll make a start. Right, I don't think the camera turned on. Um, but uh, we've got a bit of stock set up in our AR32 collet now. Um, we're coming down to size of, uh, of 18 millimeters, which are OD. We're just doing a spring cut at the moment and we'll do another measure. there, 0.03 of a mil to come back. I'm just going to lynch that down to size now, so I've only got 0.03. I'll bring this down to 18. I'll cut that off in the hacks and the um, horizontal band saw, and we'll come back and we'll start the boring work. which is exactly where I wanted to be. Still a little bit of warmth in that, so it's probably going to shrink down just a tad more, but that should fit on the motor quite nicely. No, no, I'll just cut that off the length. I'll set that up in the vise to do the, uh, the keyway, which won't be a drama. I was going to leave some stock on that and put in a V-block, but we'll, uh, we'll do it in the vise. So we'll get this faced off the length. We'll count a bore diameter nine for the uh, M5 cap screw. I'll use one of my flat bottom drills that I've got to uh, Get that uh, base squared off for it. All right, we'll set up and we'll get that uh, off the length and on the go. guys just going in with our flat bottom drill now all right that's our whole flat bottom out now all right we'll just deburr that we'll take it over the mill and we'll cut it over our keyway I'm using a, uh, a 4mm end mill here to cut the 5mm slot. Um, as I said, I don't like using 
size for size end mills or slot drills to cut the uh, slots they tend to wander it's particularly on the smaller smaller shanked uh, cutters um, they tend to pull in with the cut and uh, oversize the cut so we'll uh, run down this down uh, four millimeters and do a, a side cut of about half a mil either side so i'll just do my touch offs now to get my uh, zero points and then we can get started to hand fit that key that's just sort of starting to go in there so that'll be a light hand fit and as I always say key steel or fitting keys the last little bit is always done by hand the final finish off just with the file all right I'll uh, take that out we'll deburr it and uh, we'll have a look at it all right just before we do take it out that's a five mil slip gauge and that is a nice firm fit in there I'm happy with that So that key is just very, very slightly oversized by about 0.02 of a mil. Obviously this is bang on size, so yep, very happy with that. All right, we'll deburr that and uh, this part's finished. And we'll just wait for the uh, for the pulley to arrive in the mail and uh, we can bore and rekey that one. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. All right, guys, we received the parcel in the mail today. And uh, this is the pulley that David sent down from, uh, from Queensland. And uh, he lives just north of Brisbane, actually, uh, halfway between Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast. Beautiful part of the country. Been up there for many a holiday. Um, this pulley's got the same issue as mine had. Now, the keyway that's actually in the uh, in the motor shaft is a five mil, and the keyway in this is six point five millimeters. It's uh, it's way oversized. So we're going to recut a new keyway to uh, to be able to mount uh, our shaft in place. Um, we're also going to bore this out to uh, 18 mil at the moment. That's uh, that's measuring up at uh, 5 8 or, or close enough to 5 8. So we'll set that up in the three jaw. We'll bore that out, and then we'll get our broaching gear out. We'll cut a new keyway in at 90 degrees to what this bloke here is, and then we'll redraw and tap for a um, a small uh, grub screw. So that's the adapter shaft that we've got to fit that 18 mil to. So we'll get this set up in the lathe and uh, we'll make a start on it. That is the perfect fit. Now we don't want to make this too tight because we want to be able to adjust this pulley up and down to get the alignment right on our V-belts. But that's, there's not even a rattle in that. All right, we'll call that bore done and uh, we'll set up to uh, to cut the five mil keyway to match. All right, guys, we'll get set up to do our, uh, our broaching operation. And uh, that's a bush that I made up as a special when I did my last one. That's an 18 mil. I didn't have one that matched, uh, or a bush that matched my uh, my five mil keyway brooch. So look, we often have to make these uh, these bushes up to suit different uh, bore sizes, and, and you can lock them up fairly quick. So that's a uh, a sized fit inside. And what we'll do is we'll set that uh, that keyway around 90 degrees to what uh, that uh, six and a half mil keyway was. Then we'll drill and tap and fit off a grab screw. Now I've just got to be careful I don't go any more than 2.5 mil deep into this, otherwise I'm going to be running into that um, into that V-bolt groove. 
All right, we'll get uh, we'll get set up with the broaching press here, and uh, and we'll knock this one through. The important thing here is that we try and keep this nice and square with the aluminium. These tend to bite in a bit, and I'll try and kick a little bit. So I've just got to be careful we keep that nice and vertical as that's going home. Right, so that's the uh, the first stage of our cut, and what we'll do now is we'll pop some shimming in behind this uh, this bush groove to um, space the uh, the broaching tool out a little bit further to cut a little bit deeper. So we have these little pieces of shim stock that are made to uh, to fit inside, and often you have to make your own up to uh, to get your depths just right. much deeper than that that's getting pretty close there and what we'll do is we'll just make up the keyway height to suit now obviously keyways are a clearance on the uh, on the heights but they're a size fit uh, on the flats there and, and that's where they do their driving work so we don't want them a tight fit on the um, uh, on the bottoms here all right we'll uh, we'll set up we'll drill and tap and fit our little grub screw in place all right guys this is how I square up the keyway is uh, I'll just get some parallels, or in this case here I've got a bit of tool steel and I sit that across there and I move the pulley around until I get that even all the way across on the smaller ones it's a little bit harder to do, certainly on the larger ones it's much easier but uh, that gets us very very close just to do this drilling and tapping anyway alright we'll get the, uh, the center drill set up and uh, we'll get rid of the proper hole through right now after we've got our uh, our keyway squared up, we've then got to get the hole on centre and I just use the old fashioned way with a, uh, a ruler so we can see that we've got to crank this one way you can see that ruler starting to square up a little bit there and that's looking pretty good there so we'll lock that away and get, uh, get rid of the drill All done. What I'll do is we'll uh, we'll set this up on my bandsaw, and if it's going to fit on my bandsaw, it's going to fit onto uh, onto David's bandsaw. So we'll get this uh, this pulley assembled up. It's getting a bit late now, so I'll I'll do this tomorrow. It's getting a bit dark, and uh, we'll see how everything uh, everything looks. And if everything's okay, we'll uh, we'll get in a post bag and uh, get all the gear up to him. All right, guys. We'll catch you soon. Alright guys, we'll start uh, assembling up the um, gear we've machined up and we'll see if it's going to work on my bandsaw. And if it works on my bandsaw, it should be right to fit up on David's. So... As I said, we need to hold this key in place because it's actually um, it's open. So uh, I know it sounds rough, but 
I'm just going to use a cable tie. It's, uh, it's worked very well with my own unit. Just uh, screw this M5 in. Lock the shaft onto the uh, motor shaft. Alright, we'll just check that for alignment now. That's pretty good. Okay, all the way down. Still a grub screw. I'll just set the uh, the tension on that. All right, guys, we'll uh, we'll turn it on and we'll see how we go. All right. I reckon that's a winner. All right, well, we've helped a fellow traveller through this world. We'll get this in the post to David, and uh, he can um, get his bandsaw up and going again. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, we'll catch you soon. Well, right, guys, we'll get everything packed away and get this um, sent up to Queensland. So we'll cut, chuck a couple of uh, cable ties in there. We've got the two keys, and I'll chuck in a bit of extra stock because if David's like me, you drop it and you lose it. Length five socket out of cap screw, and we've got our adapter shaft to go in. Put in. And we've got our modified pulley that, pulley that we'll pop in as well. that with newspaper so it doesn't rattle around inside. Alright, I'll get that addressed and uh, we'll get that down to my uh, post office at my uh, local shopping village. So we'll, we'll take a trip down there and we'll get this posted on the way. Alright guys, I'll see you in a tick.